Welcome to Access 2010, Linking and Importing. I'm Trainer Laurie. Do you want to link or import from Excel? Well, you can leave it in Excel and link to Access or import from Excel into Access. When you link, it creates two entrances into one database. So that means whenever you make a change in Excel, it automatically updates in Access and vice versa. However, when you import, it creates a copy of the worksheet. And the danger is, is that you might continue to put data into the wrong one. But an import will look and act exactly as if it were in Access because it now is in Access. You'll find it in Access under External Data, Excel. And the first we're going to look at is linking. So the first thing you want to choose is to link to the data source. And then you need to choose what the data source is. So you need, uh, if you have to, you can browse. It will ask what worksheets do you want to import. You can only import one worksheet at a time. So if you have, for example, um, a, each month in a year as a different worksheet, then you're going to have to import them individually. The first one you'd import into a new table, and the others you would append to that table. You can also show named ranges. We'll talk more about that when we uh, show you how to import. Then, next for linking, you want to choose, does the first row contain column headings? And if your first row does not contain column headings, you might want to put them in. Otherwise, Access will add them, and it will be field 1, field 2, field 3. And it, it's not very compelling. It, you can't tell what's what. So you want to make sure that your first row does contain column headings. And then name it. I put the L on it so that I would know it was a link, but guess what? When you go to look at it, you can see here that it is a link because it has an arrow and it has the Excel logo. If you open it in Design View by right-clicking on it, it will let you know that some of the um, things cannot be modified because um, the properties may not be the same. So you can still go out in there and try to do it, but some things you won't be able to change. Now that we saw how to link, and it's very easy to link, we're going to show you how to import. Now while I'm showing you the steps, which is almost the exact same as for linking, I'm also going to show you how to fix the problems that could happen while importing if you were just to take some time in Excel and fix them first. So while I'm showing them to you, while we're doing this import, you would do all these things before you start the import. Again, it's under External Data, Excel, and you find it, uh, use your browse button to find it, and this time we're going to say import. And before we import, we want to make sure we grow down, because some people actually build their Excel spreadsheets so that their headers are on the left column. And But our, uh, whenever we're going to build a real database, if it's going to grow, put it in a row. And so we would want to right-click on it, copy it, and then you'll go and right click on it again. Remember this is in Excel and we can choose our paste option of transpose. When we do that, everything that's in the left column here now goes into the top row just the way it would in Access. So that's a quick fix from an Excel spreadsheet before you bring it into Access. Another problem that we sometimes have is that in Excel it might be uh, first name, last name in the same column, or some other information that's all in the same column. But you want to break it down into as small a field as you care about. And usually I like to have the first name and the last name in separate fields. It's a lot easier to do in Excel than in Access. So uh, what we're going to do is go and uh, create a, a new column and put the first name in there. This is how you do it. There's actually a, a helper, a wizard, that will walk you through it. So, the, But the first thing you have to do is, is to insert that second column. Otherwise it will overwrite whatever happens to be in that second column. So, And then we select the column that we want to change from text to columns and choose under data, text to column. It's a three-step wizard. The first step says is it delimited or fixed width? In this case, it is delimited or separated by something. In this case, it is a space. So we say delimited and next. And then it says tab by default as our delimiter, but we want to add space. So we check the space and it shows how it's going to actually separate them. Then we click next and you can make some other changes in here. Then we hit finish. It says, do you want to replace the contents of the destination cells? Remember, if we did not add a a new column with nothing in it, it'll overwrite whatever's in there. And so you have a, a chance here to say cancel. Then uh, now we're back in Access again. And our step, just like in uh, the link 
option, it says, do you want to show worksheets or named ranges? Now, we already showed worksheets, and we know that we can only import one at a time, but we can also show a named range. Uh, for example, if you've named a range, especially a range that doesn't have um, a, the header as the first row, Remember, it asks, does the first row contain column headings? And if it isn't, if it's in the seventh or eighth row, um, then you might want to create a range name. To do that, simply select the data. I like to click in and then hit Select All, or Control A, and then name it. In this case, it named it Database, and that's a good idea because Access recognizes it as Database then. And so now the first row will contain column headings, even though it's not really the first row in the Excel spreadsheet. And then when it says, now back in Access again, if it says first row contains column headings, we've got it. It works. We can make sure that's checked. Sometimes our field names have spaces in them. In Excel, that's very common, but in Access it doesn't like spaces in field names. And so you can do that this change easily in Excel. Just select the data and then do a Find and Replace. Find what? And then just put a space in and then replace with and don't put anything in and it'll replace all the spaces with nothing so it, don't actually put in this text I'm just showing you <laughs> because you can't actually see what a space looks like or nothing looks like uh, so but just put in a space in the first one and nothing and then say uh, replace all now back in access again step four is data type and this is where we can change our data type because um, sometimes it it reads it wrong for example if your first row has a column header, your second row must have data in it. And if it doesn't have data in it, it won't be able to guess correctly what it might be. If you do have NA in a date, it's better to re do a find and replace, replace NA with nothing. It's better to have a null value or nothing than it is to have the wrong data type. And then finally, it asks, uh, do you have a primary key? And remember in Excel, we're not going to have a primary key. So we want to uh, let Access create the primary key. Otherwise, you're going to have to uh, number all your records yourself. And uh, this is a good idea. You don't have to use it. You can always delete it and change it later. But it's a good idea to put it in. And then give it a name. You do have the option to create a wizard uh, analyzer to analyze your table. When you do that, some of the questions, there's a lot of different things that we'll do, but one of the things that we'll do is say, would you like to create new tables based on duplicates? And this is a great way to do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to go in and do them all by hand and create the relationships by hand. But this is nice because you simply drag and drop to create them. And it also asks if you want to save this import steps so that if you have to do this on an ongoing basis, uh, you can just click it one button and it will remember what to do. But we're going to only do it once, so we won't save those steps. And now we have a table from a spreadsheet. That's all this time. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, please click like. Thank you.